time for the Gore and More podcast. <laughs> gonna have a good time. Gonna have a good time. Yeah, we're gonna have a good time. We're going on now. A ball break, ball break. walking hand in hand in the moonlight. And the moon. We'll be the sweets all day. I swear we'll never part. We're going on now. A ball break, ball break. running in the sand. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Goremore Podcast. This is your host with the motherfucking most, TJ Bowser. And joining me, as always, is your dark lord of knowledge, Chad Chrisman, and Big Johnny D. What's going on, Gorehounds? And the killing machine himself, Bobby Amone. I'm reading! <laughs> John's cop mm-hmm. coming in there. There he is. So, guys, today is August 10th, 2020, and we have a banger of an episode for you today. But first, it's time for your sex life! Big Johnny Day, what'd you do? What did I do? You know what I did, sir. We recorded episode nine of Wake and Bake yesterday. Let's go check that shit out on projectlouder.net. Uh, shout out to the new name, by the way. If you are just tuning in and you didn't catch last week, we uh, are no longer do back discussion. Uh, when so- I threw the <laughs> severed hand, it knocked over my Star Wars action figure display. Well, oh, son of a bitch. Yes. You know, you know son, <laughs> but, uh, that's a fail. That's a big fail. Right. Uh, but going back to Slice of Life, uh, no, we did the podcast yesterday. That was really fun. Uh, swam in the pool a little bit and just had a nice, relaxing week, man. Um, played a little bit of Days Gone and some more CFDs. <laughs> and I signed up. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Brody's taking the kids to the pool. <laughs> I understand. Myself. No, he's dropping the Cosby kids off at the pool. Yeah. Oh, I was just going to say. Uh, <laughs> Listen. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> oh, stinky, stinky poo poo. Good stinky, morning, Brody. Stinky poo poo. Good morning, Brody, by the way. Keep going. Keep uh, going, Johnny. Is yeah, it, right. What's up, bud? What were you saying, Is anybody else's connection kind of. Is anybody else's connection kind of stroking out, or is that just me? Nope, just you. We're all uh, pretty, pretty good. Hmm. All right, let me refresh. I'll be right back. Okie dokie, Chad's coming back. All guys. Right. Give him a break. So should I – you know what? I looked a little bit more into something. I'm going to jump into a little bit of Wake and Bake. Dude, we talked about them dabs of the future. I saw, yeah, co- the future. I, I saw two more articles about them shits, dude, those new honeycomb ones. Uh, what the hell were they called? I don't even fucking remember. Da, now. Fuck. Dab. the – Dab uh, go check out episode nine from Dab Tabs. Da- yeah, it was just Dab Tabs. I was gonna say Dab Tax, which would also be awesome. <laughs> yeah, but somebody copyright that shit right now. Chad, get on that. Um <laughs> you heard the businessman for that. Other than that, man, no, just uh relaxing week. Kiddo uh was off or kiddo was camping with the uh parents for about four days, so I had a nice quiet house. Uh it's very enjoyable. Well, everything's back to normal now. So, uh, Chad, how you been, my bro? Not bad, my brother. I didn't do shit last week. Ooh, nice. Yeah, my my car broke down again. It's not looking good right now, but let's not, not worry nice. about that. Not nice. It's, let's not worry about that. <laughs> tra- it's transmission issues. It's a Ford. It should be covered by them. Ah, recall. Yeah, it's. Yeah, there, there's recalls on it, so they're working on it right now. Actually, it was supposed to be done today, but it threw up another fault after they reprogrammed the transmission control module. So they are probably just going to end up replacing the whole module itself. So it won't be ready till tomorrow at some point, probably. Mm, that's not terrible, though. No, no. But that's aside from that, just, you know, chilling. Played some PS4 over the weekend. I did uh, doing a lot better in Man Eater now, by the way. That's yeah. pretty- yeah. yeah, I have my I have my shark maxed out in level now. I just gotta hunt all those stupid fucking bounty hunters so I so, can uh, level up uh, the evolutions. I rock uh, all shadow stuff and then a bonehead. Yeah, I was gonna ask you what sets do you rock, bro? Yeah, that's, you that's right now. It's just all the. It's just what? What's the shadow stuff? Is that? Uh, that's like the purple shit. Yes. There's shadow, there's yeah, bone, bone, there's electric. electric. Okay, I know I have the shadow teeth. Yeah, those are I like know. the super like razor nasty bone. motherfuckers. Dude, the yeah. bone teeth look funny yeah. as fuck though. But they're nasty. They do. And they're I 
Uh, yeah, they're not as good. The, the the chef stuff is best, at least as far as teeth, because of all the uh, health regeneration you get using them. Right. Hell yeah, dude. Nice. Well, it sucks about yeah, the I've been car, enjoying man. it a lot more. Sorry about that. But... Yeah, it happens. Well, I, hopefully it shouldn't cost me anything. Right. Yeah, I don't think that's, that's always a plus. They got a recall on it, and yeah. it should cost you a dime. No, it shouldn't. Shouldn't. But shouldn't. Yeah, yeah, it's about... down and backwards. And I'm, I'm still kicking myself to that. TJ, I was telling you about that. Uh, the local Walmart had a uh, not a uh, yeah jungle hunter predator NECA figure. Nice. How much? And I let the wife for? talk me out of it. Oh, Thirty bucks. Oh, shit. Oh. Oh, well, they'll, I'm sure they'll still have it. And I told her, hey, my birthday's in a month. It'll make a nice birthday present. True that. Excuses, excuses, <laughs> man. <laughs> Shit's there. You gotta buy it. Oh, then yeah. that's why I'm a terrible influence to me and my girlfriend. So never mind. I don't know. I got the big chap alien. I'm pretty good for right now. Well, so then you're covered for a bit. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's really about it, uh, Bobby, my brother. How about you? Uh, this week was uh, last week wasn't really uh, eventful. It was more working than anything. And then um, I started doing some more work on Jason, little by little, because I'm taking my time with it to make it. The, the best that I can. And then this past week, um, I was was with my girlfriend all weekend. We had our we had some friends over on uh, Saturday night, and then Sunday was just another chill day. So this weekend was 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 pretty chill. Not too many new horror things of recently, but uh, this week I'm sure I'll have a couple of things coming in. And then I'm getting old. I'll be 27 on um, Wednesday. <laughs> oh um, shit! Damn. Well, happy <laughs> early birthday, sir. Thank you, boys. Thank yeah. you very much. Happy early so, birthday. And so just yours is a few days yeah. after, isn't it? Yes. yes. He's the 16th, right? Yeah. Chad, talk about the change. Ooh, yes. In the lineup. The change? Lineup. Aren't we swapping next Monday? Oh, yes, yes, yes. So next week... Uh, it was originally supposed to be American World in London. Uh, we're swapping it out to do TJ's pick, The Slayer, so we can do our 100th episode, which will be the Fan Takeover episode. Hell yes. yeah. And that's set for August 31st. And then which, by the up. way... Uh, Oops, sorry, Shannon, I apologize. Followed up that, uh, to the hosts of the August 31st episode. That is two days before my birthday. Ah, oh, there we go. Nice. Yeah. So, Brody, that people. means we do so want to yeah. see leg, Brody. We want to see all that down on the leg. Just, just, yes. Just full on. Okay, so in, sexy leg. Just. And what's really interesting is in between the Slayer episode and the fan takeover is uh, my pick, Deep Star 6, which was actually just announced today to be going out uh, yes. getting a Blu-ray release from... Uh, was it no Kino new Orbe? interviews. Yes. Yeah. I, I can, I'll accept that. I just... Are you sure you I'll don't want to? Whatever I can get. You don't want a commentary from the director. No. <laughs> now why? <laughs> why would we want that? <laughs> wait, actually, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why wouldn't we? <laughs> there we go. Philosophical Bobby well, here. Just, <laughs> there could be. He'll just lie out about anything on it anyway. So, yeah, but, right. but yeah, but think about it. We have that on here. So uh, it'd be funny if someone was like, "So who, whose idea was it to uh, to to uh, use this angle in this scene for uh, for the tracking shot?" And he'd be like, "Oh, Adam Marcus. I mean, oh, oh, uh, <laughs> I mean me. I mean me. Sorry, wrong, wrong lie. I mean movie. I mean, yeah. Keep going. Uh, film school. Film school. <laughs> that guy. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so yeah, those are the changes that we made. And then after the fan takeover is Pumpkinhead two. That's gonna be a doozy. Nice. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, we got some, ooh, we got some real good ones coming up. I don't want to give too much more away. Where are we? You. Uh we were talking to Bobby, but up to you now, buddy. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm good. TJ. <laughs> yeah. Okay, what? guys. So as I say every week, I did podcasts here, podcasts there, podcasts everywhere. I don't know if I talked about it on the last show, but since last show, I did add a new podcast to the Project Louder Podcasting Network, and that is House of a Thousand Discourses, hosted by Senor Duncan. Head on over to Project Louder. I'm sure going to put up some links and some episodes up on the website itself. And then I think he's on Anchor right now. 
yeah, soon to be hosted on our site. I hope, I hope he's going to be upgrading equipment and get an actual mic and whatnot soon. But his uh, podcasts are pretty entertaining. Just a dude, just raw dogging it on the microphone the way that we all yeah. love. <laughs> yeah, buddy. It's good stuff. So uh, be sure to watch out for new- <laughs> <laughs> you, love you, Joe. Oh, you know i'm joe. talking too much joe uh <laughs> anyway <laughs> wow we haven't pulled that one out in a while have we? yeah it's been a it's been a it's been <laughs> a minute it's been a minute where was uh, i where we was love I? you joe yes joe. Wow. he derailed me where was i Okay, Saturday I did um, <laughs> Saturday I did a podcast with so uh, got you all <laughs> We had Project Louder uh partner, not partner, uh fan, super fan, friend, uh Gramlin Neve Painter on. He uh talked a little bit about his book for Ghoulies and Texas Chainsaw Massacre and nice. made fun of Mick here, made fun of Mick there, and then mentioned to Graham that his name's too long. And then a fun fact, I'll talk about it on this podcast as to not uh, embarrass mix sorry oh. i uh drank a little a and w before this so we originally were supposed to have graham humphreys on but mick and his infinite older wisdom accidentally messaged graham painter thinking he was graham humphreys uh if you guys don't know who graham humphreys <laughs> is because graham humphreys is the uh, artist behind the nightmare at elm street posters so he messages him and for three weeks he's under the impression that graham humphreys is coming on and graham painter on the other hand, is telling his publisher that he's coming on the new project louder and he's going on rabbit hole again. So his publisher starts promoting the episode. And I'm like, okay. So Mick messages me and goes, You ready for Humphreys? I said, You mean Lenith Painter? He goes, Hold on. And I call him. He goes, I'm checking my messages. Hold on. <laughs> he goes, That's about right. Good. Good. I said, What? He goes, now we're good. I said, you didn't message Graham Humphreys, did you? He goes, no. He goes, I thought I did. <laughs> <laughs> we are having Graham Humphreys on next week. <laughs> oh, shit. Also, how would you guys like to see the uh, pissing in a Coke bottle story animated? Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> And I think that would translate really well to animation. Uh, Mick and I had a conversation if we could uh, translate one of our non-movie related stories from Rabbit Hole to an animation, which would it be? And the Coke and the piss, like the, the pissing in a Coke bottle story is one of the first ones. Because if we could get like a really good animated point of view shot of like just a stream of piss spraying all over the dashboard, <laughs> that'd be great. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> Bobby's lighting the candle back here. Must have farted. Yes, I I want a nice little smile in here, you know. Put a little heavy on the garlic. Stoners set- United said, "Love it." What's up? Setting the mood. Oh, what's up? Pretty good. Oh. I wonder if they found us through Wake and Bake. I hope so. That'd be awesome, right? But other than that, uh, set up a new mannequin today. You see, uh, Halloween H two O Myers is now chilling over there. Got oh. a couple new Blu rays in. I uh, got a silicone hand in, as you guys saw from the show opener. Got a metal finger from Evil Dead 2 over there. <laughs> uh, follow me on Facebook at Facebook at Lejos with Lay Most to uh, see my live unboxing, the Nothing Network. Keep it up, fellas. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, all the all the people showing support today. I appreciate that, guys. Really do appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. But I say, without further ado, boys, yeah, <laughs> let's, let's get on with today's shit. episode. So today's episode is 1990, no, 1988's mm-hmm. Return of the Living Dead 2, directed by Ken Wiederhorn, written by Ken Wiederhorn. Wait, he Wiener does it. Wiederhorn. He doesn't make horror films. Not produced Wiener. by Tom Fox, introducing Michael Kenworthy as Jesse Wilson, Marsha Dietz. How the fuck, Dietlein? Diet lean, maybe who knows? Diet lean, uh, diet lean. Diet lean. Oh, that sounds lean. like a terrible diet shake from the eighties, dude. Diet lean. Dana, 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 Dana Ashbrook is Tom S. Essex. Essex. Yeah, okay. Essex. James Karen is Ed Matthews. Tom Matthews as Jamie. Uh, so what the fuck is Joey, Joey Hazel? Joey. Susan Snyder is ah. Brenda Herzog. Phil Bruns as Doc Mandel. 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 Howie Mandel. Yes. Thor Van Lingwen as Brill Billy. What the fuck's wrong with me? Crowley. 
Jason Hogan as Johnny, Mitch Pelleggi as Sarge, Alan Troutman as Tar Man. Not really, though. Tar Man version Jay- two. Yeah, I'm sure Chad will argue with that. Music by J. Peter Robinson. Cinematography by Robert Elswit, not Cundy. Edited by Charles Bornstein. Heard that name before. Distributed by Lorimar mm-hmm. Pictures. Released on January 15th, 1988. Runtime of 89 midgets. Budget of 6.2 million. Gross 9.2 million. Million. <sighs> Roll that beautiful bean footage. This one's a Shout Factory one, guy. I can just hear the despair in Chad's fucking... Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I gotta watch it again. Just remember, this wasn't my pick. This was a sequel to my pick. Right. Hey, man. It's only gonna get worse when we get deeper. Hey, we could always watch the Romeo and Juliet with zombies. When we watch Romeo and Juliet? No, Romeo and Juliet uh, with zombies is the third one. Changed my mind. That will be carried to the grave as the horror classic is reborn. Stunning. <laughs> Return of the Living Dead, Part 2. Jesse, her dear, will be the first to know. Billy will be the first to go. We've got to get out of here. Get to a phone. Oh, he Against an army of the dead, <laughs> starved for life. Christine. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's what I thought. Steve, if you want to uh, call, let us know and we'll give you a, a little ring a ding ding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no damage whatsoever. Return of the Living Dead, Part 2. Just when you thought it was safe to be dead. <laughs> there it is, boys. There it is. Oh, God. That was fast. So before we talk about it, let's give a ring a ding to some of the gore hounds. First up, uh, my doppelganger, King of Manga from Down Under, Baroda Kane from Victoria, Australia. This should, this should be entertaining. Howdy there, partner. Uh, yeah, let's get fucking rowdy <laughs> so return <laughs> of the living dead part two thoughts feelings brody kane right here's the thing i was actually a huge fan of this film when i was a kid like it actually scared the living fuck out of me until i grew up and re-watched this and part one so in saying that it is a fun film but part one is the incredibly more superior film mm-hmm. in the franchise, obviously. Um, yeah, the cinematography was pretty mediocre. The story is even more mediocre because basically it's part one. Um, I've got to give credit to the soundtrack. I love the soundtrack to this. You got your anthrax, etc., thrash metal, love it. Um, and the, I've got to give also get. Ugh, also, I got to give credit to the special effects that was in this film. Um, I absolutely love the torso of the dam scene. If you don't know what that is, um, it's basically when the kid is in um, the hospital and that zombie is just keeps coming at him and he's like, yeah. Do you, do you remember that shit? Yes. Yes. I, I yeah. think the effects, yeah. I, I will give you a little preview of what i'll be talking about i think that the effects actually lacked in this film and a little bit on the softer side and i think the best way to describe this film or to compare this film is this is like the first film but a soft version this is to uh return of the living dead is to what uh the force awakens is to star wars or a new hope this is a, yep. a soft reboot or reimagining where it just touches on all the key points of the first film yeah pretty much exactly Hit the nail on the head. Um, it, but for me, it's probably the best scene of the film. Um, yes. 
yeah, I don't, yeah, I, I, I love that scene. I just don't know what happened to the rest of the movie. I like anyway. that scene, and I um, also like Discount Tar Man. Huh. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, I could, yeah, I could say that. Yeah, I could do that. But I have one question. Okay. Hopefully, I haven't taken this away from Johnny. But why do we not see Joey and Ed at the end of the film? Like, I wonder what the hell they were doing when shit went down at the power plant. Yeah. Over it. Like, that's a good question. That is a good question. Boys, do you have an answer that, for this? No, I don't. What about the other little boy that? The one that oh the friend yeah he's not there either. What about the other little boy, the friend? He Sorry. was just the toady that nobody gave a shit about. What's that? The, the yeah, but what happened to him? He got a he got a face full. What happened to him? You never see him again. That's a <laughs> so again. I, I think uh, you're you're looking into a film that has more holes than uh, the Last Jedi. So we're gonna have to uh, slice of Swiss cheese. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'm really interested to hear your thoughts I, on these questions. Yeah, look at Chad. Chad's like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> you love the last Jedi. <laughs> I do. Yeah, I'm tell, not saying it has. You can tell thoughts, he. Though. You can tell he was fucking demo. But I, as soon as it, as soon as the show started, I was like, oh, "Chad does not like this film." <laughs> <laughs> nope. Well, Brody, uh, before we let you go, do you got a score for this uh, bad boy? Yeah, I do. Um, I'm going to give it a 2.8. Ah, okay. That's pretty solid. Pretty would, you, fair. would you say that's a high? I'm well, very happy to skip this one straight to use in this part three. Yes, Brody and I have actually uh, talked about our love for part three and how much we enjoy it more than this film. And oh, I, yeah. and, uh, when reaching for a Blu-ray, I might even, depending on my mood, put part three in over part one. Wow. Fuck yeah. Mm -hmm. awesome. hot take. Hot take. Oh, that's a hot take. That's a hot take. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Brody. Well, thanks for calling. Uh, Goremore, brother. I appreciate it. No worries. Have a have a great night, boys, and I'll catch you next week. Later, Mr. Yeah. See you later, buddy. So, I will say this real quick on part yes. three, because that was the one that I started with as a kid. Really? Yeah. That I didn't see the first one yet. Oh, mm -hmm. shit. Look at that. He just whips it out. Not only that, part three is the more serious of the three. Best drawn video. So, yes. I will say that, which I liked because that's why I liked it as a kid. And then I went back and discovered the first, and I'm like, okay, it's one and three that are the best. <laughs> it's Romeo and Juliet, but believe it the families pulling them apart, it's the fact that there's a zombie virus. <laughs> believe it or not, this is the first one that I saw. Part two is the first one I saw. No, uh, really. you know what's funny? I can actually agree, and that was, I think, thanks to like TNT on a Saturday <laughs> for sure. Like, we just rented it, we, we rented it right after it came out. I, I was living in Texas at the time, and then so we just said, screw it, rented it. And I'm like, huh, Steve thinks he was fried at the okay, power now plant. I can saw that. So, I don't, I mean, Steve might be right, I don't know on that one. We do know Michael Jackson, was I don't fried. remember if they showed him, but. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to yes. call Steve and you can argue with Steve while he's on the phone. So, without further ado, Scuba Steve, motherfucker. Woo! Scuba Steve. Give me a flex over there, John. Uh, come on, give me a flex. I saw that arm. Come on, I'll do it. It's what all up? What up, Scuba Steve? Welcome back to Gore and More. What is going on? So, Return of the Living Dead Part 2. What do you think? Yes, yes, yes. Well, uh, it, it's one of those movies that you love to hate. Mm -hmm. You know, it, I love the first one. The first, first time I saw the original, scared the living hell out of me. You know, I always love zombie flicks. But this one, you know, when, when I saw the original, I was like, holy shit, you can't kill them. They're dead. Hello, it makes sense. Part two for me is more of the, <laughs> it's more of the, of the, the kid version of part one. Uh, you know, it, it, it is the softer of the the films mm -hmm. so but i mean i i like it it's not my favorite movie you know but it, it's 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 watchable for me it's entertaining very very yeah. you know it, it, at the end you know when you when you get a glimpse of uh, michael jackson you know it, it's great <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is discount now. michael jackson everything in this discount discount michael michael jackson. Jackson. dollar yeah. store michael jackson oh there we go right 
Bro, he's a little <laughs> weird Al. Michael Great Jackson. value, Michael Jackson. Oh, so, man. But, you know, it, it's, it's... Oh. Bobby's showing some stuff. Continue, Steve. <laughs> like saying, you know, it's, it's one of those films where, you know, you, you watch it and it's... It's not the best film, but you know you 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 enjoy it, I guess, for what it is. Mm -hmm. But you know, it, it it is what it is. Yeah, it it doesn't have the same feeling, or doesn't leave you with the same feeling as you get whenever you watch the first one, which is a slight feeling of fear with mixed with the comedic relief. And this film's more comedy based, with just the the atmosphere and the setting be. And the situation be more horror related rather than the actual tonality of the film. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks for calling in, Steve. And what uh, what's your score before we let you go? I give this one a two. Okay. Fair enough. Definitely. Fair enough. You know, it, it's got, like I said, it's got its funny moments, and, and it's more comical than 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 the first one. You know, and it's just it's it's a two, solid two for me. Okay. Fair enough. That's fair enough. Assessment. Well, thanks for calling Can't in, brother. That. Thank yes, you, sir. Y'all take it easy, fellas. Yep. See you later. later. Thanks, buddy. Later. Okay, guys. So let's move on with today's show. Oh, snap. Who's running down this motherfucker? I'll do it. Do it. Oh, shit. Here we go. Oh, Bobby Gill. All right. Those deadly cans of poisonous gas that turn corpses into carnivorous zombies are back in this sequel to the 1985 version of The Return of the Living Dead. This time, the trouble begins when the gas-bearing canisters accidentally roll out, out off an army truck and end up in an old cemetery near a new housing development. Talk about convenience. The little boys find the... How do you pronounce that? Innoxious. Innocuous. Innocuous and drums and open them. <laughs> That's Cat the word of the day. Could you imagine <laughs> you're, just, you're walking by and you see that and you're like, the word of the I'm day. Innocuous. Blah, blah, blah. I'm going to open that shit. Yeah, right. A hellish, <laughs> a hellish green vapor comes out. It's that wacky weed. And suddenly all of those <laughs> touches get the craving for the contents of human craniums. The devil's lettuce, he says. It's devil's <laughs> lettuce for zombies. <laughs> Send more paramedics. Oh, no, that see that was good because that was the first one. Mm -hmm. Get that one. Mm -hmm. We got what's the president? We got uh, some. Hey, hey, what? You better fucking deliver when we ask the fucking question. You don't let me down. Uh oh, <laughs> I'm prepared for your question, and if you don't ask it, I'm gonna be let down. And there was one very simple question asked in this film. And I want you to ask the question. Okay. Well, I have a couple questions, but. <laughs> There's one important one. Ah. Chad, do you remember? Mm. I'm not going to lie. The US like a... Oh, okay. So that was the one I was just saying. Yeah. Say what? It was the one where he was what talking you, to Zombified Ryan. When he was talking to Zombified Ryan Styles. And uh, yeah, see, <laughs> you're just instantly like, oh, I get it, I get it. Yep, yep, straight up Ryan Styles. Uh, that's, that's a good one. No, dude, yeah, come back to the hospital. Um, <clears throat> guys, how, this movie was it was woof. <laughs> I, I, I said it, I yeah. said it before we started the show to you, boys, but I'll say it now while we're on the air. This was, you know, the first one was 80s cheese, but that was good yeah. 80s cheese. The the second one was oh, yes, was cheese of here's a block of cheese to a movie. And it really it worked, but it didn't work in a lot of ways. It's like my grandpa. I gotta say, I really like to <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> You know, I, I really liked how TJ put it where the comedy in the first one was more situational. It was more like, uh, you know, comedic reaction to what was happening. Whereas this is fucking slapstick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. full out. Oh. I mean, it, it was pretty evident when you saw the zombies crawling out of the graves and the one puts her fucking glasses on. <laughs> okay. And the one kept getting his hands stepped on. It's, 
As stupid as that was, I did laugh. Uh, yeah. I hate to I, did, it. I chuckled. It, I know. It was like that really stupid, just like dad humor. You know what I mean? You're just like, ha. But that's yeah. the best the boy. One zombie. You give it one good ha. That's about it. Really? Chad, and I, 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 man? Yeah. Okay. What? This is supposed to be Tar Man on my what shirt. Discount Tar Man. Discount yeah, Tar Man. I was just gonna. I, I was just gonna start talking about Great Value Tar Man and how, <laughs> how he looked cartoony compared, compared to the original big. that looked frightening. Well, right. Not not only like that. The original I mean, Tar Man is the stuff of nightmares. It is. <laughs> not only that. If you look at this Tar Man, anybody here notice how he looks like he actually gained something? Like his face looks bigger. Like yeah, he's not so space looks like fucking brains, bro. No, yeah, but yeah. the original one looked like fucking like he, he looked like he had no body. Tall this and lanky like with all the shit hanging off. That I think it was the appearance of uh because everything was tall and lanky and drooping down right. from all the shit being on it. So it gave this appearance of this long armed being just kind of like waving its arms and fucking like hot hippity hopping its way through the fucking basement <gasps> you know and this one's just fucking half ass in it fucking great value like chad said fucking hardcore shitty fucking makeup half ass performance and god yeah, and, some, the and the little kid just yeah the little kid just knocks him into the ravine and that's the last you see of him <laughs> Right, fucking Tar Man is a nemesis. He's like an uber zombie. He's not just a normal run of the mill zombie. He's a trioxin cylinder zombie. This is the OG. This is the notorious B.I.G. of fucking zombies. <laughs> like he shouldn't be just be able to be knocked down. This motherfucker took a baseball bat and shit in the other film, didn't he? Like he took some fucking hits. Yeah. yeah. But like, dude, it, it was you know, the, great value sometimes has some good products. This was not one of them. This was not one of them. It had a funky aftertaste for sure. Yeah, not the one you really want. You know, it's like eh, I would not. Take that. Yeah, I don't know. He, he never came back. That was bullshit. No. No. You're like That's... the biggest. They had more the of a nemesis in the one, the one where they cut his hand off. Ooh, that's a good question. The, the With fucking severed head came back at the end. No, the, the one who got blown in half by the fucking shotgun was a better nemesis because he kept coming on his fucking hands. And to answer Scuba Steve's question. Wait, 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 wait. Can, can we just get you to say that again? What? What? He just kept coming on his fucking hands. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize that. <laughs> so, I, so I just like, wait a minute. Yeah, I didn't right. <laughs> There's your quote of the night, guys. Oh, he kept just coming just on his hands. On his fucking hands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my God. <laughs> Wolf. Uh, anyway. Okay, that, that line right there was better than this entire movie. <laughs> right? so like, what was return of the living dead to you to part two to you he kept coming on his hands <laughs> <laughs> not said brother not said it's not gonna be my catchphrase from okay, now on for let's, let's keep let's keep I, the old tr uh, train going here we go I'm, I'm really glad we're all on the same page here as far as hating this movie by the way bro it's it was bad dude like it was. So, no, it wasn't it was. bad. It was meh. Well, listen, That's if you, if you watch bad. this with somebody, there was at least probably 20 different scenes where you hey, probably Don? looked at each other. Yes. Just before dawn. I'd rather watch I'll that. Take just before dawn. No, you, okay. you want to call films yeah. bad, but you got to compare them to actual bad films. And then what would you watch? Just before dawn. I think I watched just before dawn. Watch just before dawn. Over this? Yeah. Over this? Oh. Hundred times, dude. Yes. What? Yes. Bro. Bro. I know. I feel like I now I need to look up that review just so I could fucking knock this one below that shit. Dude. Here's a question. Are you guys able to look at this kind. standalone and not a sequel? Because I think you're you're comparing it to the first film rather than looking at it objectively. <laughs> no, I, I I have big questions about that. Yeah. I, I okay. think we need to move on and get to that. There are there are connections no. to the first film. Right. Well, we can't well, jump ahead. We got to get, you know, we got to look behind the curtain. Uh, yeah. Well, that, that, is, that. that is actually in my behind the curtain stuff. Ooh, all right. Yeah. So let's, hey. let's do it. So we're taking no. peaks already. Let's do it. You guys need to quit jerking, okay? Jerking. Quit jerking the fucking curtain and just, just let him, you know, 
Keep going. I'm absolutely god smacked. (laughs) 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 Okay, so uh, on to the sweet behind the scenes stuff. The Michael Jackson zombie was improvised on the spot. Awesome. I'm not surprised. Oh, oh, oh. I I marked this down in my notes just because I wanted to bring this up just to throw back to last week's episode. You remember how I said I thought Brian Tyler, the guy that did the score for Frailty, I thought he also did the score for Guardians of the Galaxy? Yeah. I was close. Same neighborhood, but bigger. He actually did the score for Avengers Age of Ultron. Oh. Damn. That's some deep Marvel knowledge right there. Yep. Yeah. Hey, we got to see fucking uh, Steppenwolf this week. We Man. did. Yeah, he looked right. a lot cooler than he did before. I want to know of him. <laughs> Sorry, I was reading Scuba Steve's uh, <clears throat> comment there. Yeah, Is he yeah. still going on about the zombified STD? Yes. <laughs> Yo, man, is, there was a, wasn't there a movie that they He's did only talking that? about this because of how hot this girl is and i think what's her name mindy clark okay. mm-hmm. yeah her uh her zombie nipples are fucking fire oh yeah even more so than zombie she, strippers she, yes wow. give me 20 minutes guys. she I'll was that. hot back in the day mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. especially zombie okay. with all the bondage and stuff you got to stop i'm gonna need like an hour here an hour jesus christ dude I mean, well, you are lighting. He's going to keep coming all over his hands, right? He's like going to keep coming on his hands, making guys. it romantic for himself, dude. <laughs> okay, moving on, guys. Tom Matthews disliked the sequel so much that he said the best part about making the film was the outstanding services. Huh. So he hated making the movie, but he loved the food. Yeah, that's okay, man. Sometimes Sounds you just got to get that marriage. Sometimes you just got to get that paycheck. Oh. Oh yeah. Sometimes you got to do Hills It's not too. Friday part six, and it ain't the first one, so I agree with him. <laughs> no. <laughs> Moving on, Don Kalfa, who played Ernie, whatever the fuck, in the original Return of the Living Dead, originally auditioned for the role of Doc Mandel before Philip Bruins got the part. Mm. James Karen's character, Ed, says, I'm going to get me cremated. This is how his character eventually dies in the previous film. Yes. Such, he cremated himself. That was such a good scene in the first one, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the MPAA would have granted this film a PG-13 if the scene at the hospital where the zombie down. Wait, what was that, bud? Sorry, you kind of cut out. I said the MPAA would have granted this film a PG-13 if the scene at the hospital your internet is probably shot not in half to do this right now. Yep, you can't even hear Chad right now. I was saying, you guys getting a lag? Yeah, there's a. I'm oh no 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 no! no. I'm, I'm not. Even, I wasn't even talking. Oh okay, keep going. Just just follow <laughs> through. Nobody interrupt them. Okay, <clears throat> All right. I'll just I'll just pull a Bobby and hard, hard wire. All right next week. Uh, Brian Peck is the only person to have a role in the first three Return of the Living Dead films. He played the role of Scuzz in the first, many of the close-up zombies in this one, and ballistics technician in... So he had a role in all three. No shit. You cut out again there. The blue... Hold on, I'm going to refresh again. Okay, Just give me like two minutes, guys. No problem. We'll be here. So, all right. While Chad Quinnick has bounced. Uh, we'll go hey, you guys want to do a sidebar? Go for it. What do you got, boss? Let's hit it. Okay, so I'm sitting here. Kelvin Matos, uh, Matos, however the fuck you want to say his name. I'm horrible with names. Sent me a trailer for a just recently announced new Common Rider game. Oh, the one you just sent me. Yeah, what? buddy. You want to watch the trailer? Fuck it, dude. Let's do it. Wake and bake sidebar. Throw it out. <laughs> this vaguely uh throw that trailer up. I'll be right dude, back. Chad's gonna be so mad because we're gonna be talking about Power Rangers again on Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's, it's not, not Power Rangers. Rangers. It's not Power, not Rangers. Power Rangers. Sorry. Yeah. I know. <laughs> yes, you do. You gotta do it. It's compared to apples and oranges. It is. Chad, we're not having a Power Rangers sidebar. Just, just go back to where you were. 
<laughs> that sounds to me like you guys were. Oh, no. You guys, yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know. Nope. Don't know no idea. Nope. いや、いや、いや。え、ビビッパビ。ノーバビ。ちょっと。やけに警戒が厳重だな。来て正解だったか。お前も仮面ライダーなの。次から次へと油断がなる。次から次って、俺の他にも Anybody for the audio? They're just like, what the fuck? Sorry, guys. Watch the new Father Rider video game trailer. I hope you all know Japanese, motherfucker. Get that audience over there. They're enjoying it. Right? I hope so. This is the power of the subtitle. Shit, it's for the switch. Yeah, buddy. Ooh, Let's get that okay, I don't know shit about Common Rider, so it's kind of hard for me to get excited about that. <laughs> it's That's very fine. similar like... to Power Rangers, but uh, he's like a, a more like a very powerful type thing. Uh, so, uh, how do I put this? He has a morpher. Especially, he could tap, into, tap into like the multi grid. Like he's got. Instead of like just like where you need five Power Rangers, he's like it's one it. man it's Power Rangers. Me. Okay, right. it's one man Power okay. Rangers, X Men type thing. Okay, it just yeah. What was that? What was uh the kid Summers X Men there with all the powers? Pretty yeah. much, yeah. Kind of same yeah. thing. Good old fucking nineties. Old Age of Apocalypse. Yeah, baby. Oh my! I think I there's an American version uh, of Common Rider that we got in the nineties. I can't remember what it was called. Yeah, Masked Rider. Masked Rider. Masked Rider. Ooh, yeah. Nice. Pop All right, Chad's so now we got our Chadwick Rock. back. Let's pop back those curves. Did it cross over with Power Rangers or not? No. No. Speaking of Power Rangers, it crossed crossover. over with something. I think we only I, ever got a, bat, a Beetleborg crossover. Oh. With, did we get... We got Ninja did, Turtles. What the fuck are you talking wait, about? We didn't get a Beetleborg yeah. crossover. We only got a power, uh, Ninja Turtles Power Rangers. Yep. And we just I just watched that with my daughter yesterday, actually. And it was, she was just like, wait a minute. She's like, why are the Power Rangers with the turtles? And I was and like, and then oh. you can explain, well, honey, because this season actually saved Power Rangers because <laughs> before this, Power Rangers Turbo was the lotus, lowest rated season ever in history, almost got it canceled. And then Power Rangers in Space brought it out from an early grave, saved it, and then they introduced it with its then popular show. Power Rangers, the next mutation, airing on Fox Kids in the oh, late Ninja 90s. Ninja Turtles. Ninja Turtles. Oh, what did I say? Yeah. What did I you say? said Power Rangers. The Power next Rangers. Mutation. Oh, sorry. Ninja Which Turtles I totally want to see mutated Power Rangers now. You sold me on that. Psycho <laughs> Rangers. Close enough. I've always, oh. I've always, I've always wanted to know how they went from such a great show like Power Rangers Zio to Turbo. Beetleborgs, dude. Beetleborgs. Beetleborgs were crushing them. Yep. And I explained so this on uh, Wake and Bake. Yeah. Yep. They went with the kid gimmick, and then uh, it fucking unfortunately tanked Power Rangers because they came out with the movie and everything before the season. Yeah. And it definitely was not like the actual original movie there, which, God, I love that movie, dude. It's so cheesy. Again. It's so awesome. <laughs> yeah, but, 
What I hated about the original movie was it got retconned in the next season of the show. It did, dude. All the Zords and everything. Yeah. Well, uh, retcon, not really. Uh, it, well, it, it, it caught up in a way, as in there's two different... It completely retconned it. Well, they ended up with what the, the same Zords and everything that we see in the movie. They just acquire them in a completely different fucking manner. Yeah. I wish... That is exactly what retcon means. <laughs> True. That is the exact definition of retcon. I mean... <laughs> Yeah, they still listen. I like the ninja suits the best, dude. That's what I was happy that they, you know, at least stuck with those. What I couldn't yeah, stand dude. was Ninjor, the guy that flew around on a fucking cloud. Oh, sounded like Goku? fucking Dudley Do Right, bro. He was totally on Nimbus, man. That was fucking awesome. What are you talking about? I hated his voice. He sounded like Dudley Do Right. He's right. Yep. That's now that you're it, thinking about it, you're like, yeah, Ninjor he did. was the unneeded sixth ranger. Right. Yeah facts uh all right okay, here we are having a power ranger yep. sidebar on a fucking horror on, show come on, come on, man. Blue electrocution lines and god damn it guys the blue electrocution lines in the final sequence were all hand drawn frame by frame and cost over fifty thousand oh, dollars there goes your budget right just there. to draw electricity the music score on the u.s dvd release is almost completely different to the original theatrical release this was speculated to be because of difficulties obtaining the right to use the original score however However, the original score was, and it also restores the original Lorimar Pictures logo that was plastered on the Warner DVD release. All right. Tom Matthews and James Cara nearly duplicate their roles from Return of the Living Dead as a pair who are sickened by zombie gas. In both films, they even have the same lines. Listen, kid, if you like this job, like this job. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> word for Great word. Robbie. You like this job? No. Like this job? Decent. By the way, there was also a nice throwaway line. I don't know if anybody noticed it when Tom Matthews said that it was like a dream because he felt like they'd been through this before. Yeah. In the back of the seat, back seat of the car there. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I love it. Despite cool. having several horror pictures, director Ken Wiederhorn was not a fan of the horror genre. Many cast and crew members expressed in interviews that they were displeased with his lack of enthusiasm towards the project. I, definitely I showed in that, the final product. That definitely showed big. That's why it's soft. Yeah. That's what you He was known more for comedies than anything. The cemetery and storm drain were complete outdoor sets. The mausoleum hospital, meatpacking factory, and interior house were also purpose built sets. The issue of Peter Parker, the spectacular Spider Man that Jesse takes out of his comic book box at the beginning of the movie is number 53 from April 1981. Hot damn. Holy shit. The set for Jesse's bedroom is the same one used for Billy's. Posters and furniture were rearranged to change the look. That's how cheap they were on this movie. They just yeah. reused the um, set. But yeah. then again, it was like, then again it was a house built identical to each other anyway. Right. I mean, dude, those I'm are all like cookie cutter that. fucking suburban houses. Yeah. So yeah, that's exactly what's what they are. Guys? What's that's up? just the way they did it. Much better movie. The script was not originally written as a sequel to Return of the Living Dead. Producer Tom Fox was interested in Ken Wiederhorn's story, but would only finance it if he agreed to make it as a part of the series. They had a big pitch fest where they had people pitch ideas for the sequel. Interesting. Yes. I'm actually now that that actually makes more sense now. Yeah. Now I understand why it is the way it is. This was like an early example of uh, filmmaking by committee, they call it. Uh, Where they just throw a bunch of ideas and try to make a script out of it. At AKA the end of the original the VHS tape... <laughs> uh, Green Lantern, even. Mm. Uh, at the end of the original VHS tape, there is a commercial for a number that you can call to order clothing from the movie. This, this was a limited time off tank top, a black or white t-shirt, Keep cutting out, Chad. It's pretty bad. Black. God damn it. There's nothing I can do. I've refreshed. I've done everything I can. Okay, then let's... Uh, how, how many more no notes do you have? Uh, we'll go through a couple. Uh, Jonathan Terry reprises his role as Colonel Glover from the original Return of the Living Dead, making a connection to both films. Okay. Almost out again. The street where Jesse and his family live was, in fact, a tract housing development still under construction. Okay. I thought that was something. Can you guys hear me? Oh. Yeah, yep. yeah. 
Hey, is it my microphone cutting in and out, or is it just it's me? It's the time? internet. Apparently. The internet. Like, yeah, it's just like lagging out. My kids. My kids are. My kids are probably on fucking. Yeah, it's real fucking choppy. You, yeah, YouTube or something. cut out completely. Yeah. <laughs> we had this conversation on TJ one day where he was like, "What did you do? You were cutting out the Wi-Fi out of the other part of the house." Yep. <laughs> well, I shut her right well, down. I'm on the Wi-Fi extension, so. Hmm. Oh yeah, I fucking real time shut down the internet to the Hold rest on, of the fucking house. Yeah, That's fucking with that shit. That's Let me awesome. check something real quick. Okay, no, that one's not connected. To the magic number. Yeah, someone's using. Someone's using bandwidth, and I guarantee it's the kids. You know Dang what they're kids. probably Damn. on their switches. Damn you! <laughs> Chad's gonna get the belt. No, we uh, you know what? We, we went through the good stuff. It's it's not a good enough film to go all behind the scenes with. It's fair it's enough. If bad. you want to find out more behind the scenes, there is a twenty minute mini doco on YouTube. Just search "Turn of the Living Dead Part 2 and you will find it. Okay, so Johnny D, big question, motherfucker. Alrighty, so who's the president? <laughs> uh, um, you mean at the time of the movie or? <laughs> what do you mean? What's the zombie say? I don't remember. I believe it was Harry, Harry Truman. Truman. Yep. Yeah. Harry Truman. Truman. Yeah. Ryan right. Styles with a Harry Truman. Um so Chad kind of answered one question uh within the notes, which is kind of cool, but that was uh as TJ kind of hinted at earlier. Was this a sequel? Is this a reboot of the first one or is this a like in twilight universe. Zone, right and in like a twilight zone weird fucking demons 2 kind of thing we're gonna reuse okay our people, but... hot take this is similar to evil dead evil dead 2 i like i said demons and demons 1 or demons 1 and demons 2 all right now wait wait wait, wait, wait. hold on wait a minute here we're gonna go on here because what's that for, all right to say this could potentially be a reboot of the first one, uh, bullshit. All right, they failed. I'm gonna say well, it's I'm, not. A, it's not a reboot. It's, it's a, a reboot. It's, it's an in-universe I'm, I'm successor. That one out now. Would I say it's like a Twilight Zone thing? Yeah, because you got a lot of similar people from the first one, basically. Mm -hmm. So I would go with more of that. Now, like when you said before, like with Evil Dead and Evil Dead Two. Uh, Put it this way: If you watch Evil Dead One and then Evil Dead Two, it doesn't matter which one you actually start with, because I mean, well, me, to, me, a, to a racist does. one, you don't. But, yeah, it tells the story again, just differently. Instead of a group of five people, it's a group of see two who go to start, and then more came. So. Can I say random Evil Dead sidebar now, quick? Okay. Uh, did you gentlemen have you, any of you gentlemen seen Evil Dead the musical? <laughs> yeah, I, no, I've listened to it. Dude, um, it is fucking phenomenal. I've listened to the soundtrack. I got to see it twice in New York City. So they did the perfect, like, what Only you want. Only rich people go to musicals. It wasn't, first of all. Okay, yeah, wait a minute. You want to know about the price difference, dude? This is bullshit. Here we so, go. So super sidebar on this one. You just riled me up a little bit. I forgot about this. <laughs> so the first time I went down, went with a couple people, and we got, like, Decent seats, but they were kind of in the back. There was Section C. They were like 60 bucks a ticket. Ew, Section C. So I was like, eh, whatever. So the second time I went down, I went down with my boys. We got Splatter Zone tickets, which was the first three rows, and then you get hosed in blood. So we're all like wearing white fucking shirts. And she's like, dude, 20 bucks a seat. I'm like, wait a minute. What the fuck? What? Really? Bro, $40 difference to get hosed in blood. Who the fuck wouldn't want that? I don't know. And you're closer. Yeah. And that's ridiculous. So the whole six hour ride down, I'm riding with these two girls and the one girl um, in the back, she's like a theater buff and shit like that. So she's done like gone to musicals and shit. Obviously, Evil Dead musical is the only musical I've ever actually been to besides like a <laughs> high school play back then. Like a high school one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Um, high school so musical. we're going down the whole mm -hmm. way and I'm arguing. I'm like, yo. They're gonna have foam finger chainsaws. She's like, they're not gonna have foam finger chainsaws. I'm like, yes, they fucking are. I guarantee it. I'm like, I'm so hoping they do. And she's like, it's a musical. They're not gonna have anything like that. Like, it's fucking Evil Dead. They're gonna fucking Why have something like that. <laughs> and I just want to let you know, right there. 
so good so good um but that musical did it perfectly they gave you the whole first one with the whole cast and literally let it right into the second one so if like there was ever a way you got a combination of the first tied into the second like that it would be perfect I would say this is definitely a sequel because at the beginning, when uh, after the tanker, the fucking thing falls off and they're at the military base, the guy looks at it and is like, oh shit, not again. He did say that. That is true. It's a loose sequel. <laughs> it's yeah. a loose sequel, but it's still. I like a how he just started up just because the dude smoked a joint, somehow his fucking shit came loose. That gives stoners a bad fucking rep, dude. He tied that shit well before he smoked. You know what I mean? Like, what is in right. your hand? <laughs> oh, it's my fucking shitty machete. Sorry, I'm doing a body. I'm just playing with shit. <laughs> Keeping my hands busy, my bad. I'll keep it down. The remote's I, over I, there. I just, I just see this thing come at, come in a frame, like. What the fuck is that? <laughs> and the more <laughs> intense you get, the more I see it in frame. So yeah. here. I gotta say, I gotta say, John, after your story, like you don't even exist in the frame anymore. I just keep my eyes keep going to the foam yeah, finger chainsaw dude. up there. I wish, man, I wish I could see it. Hold on, fuck it, dude. Give me a second. Bye. <laughs> Johnny will be back. Oh, there's his underwear. He's getting, oh. All right, there we go. We saw your undies, John. It was beautiful. Oh, thank you. We see draws. Woo! Yes. <laughs> Dude, awesome. This is the best twenty dollars ever fucking spent. Yeah. <laughs> and I was so pissed because when I was starting to date my wife, she tried to like rip it off my hand, and she ripped it. So I had to like fucking tape it and shit on the back to hold it oh, together. I was oh, so mad. Me, me, man. I was like, I can't even get one of those anymore. What the fuck? Like, oh. <laughs> so mad. <laughs> so mad. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh. Sorry. Anyway. I lost my cursor. It better not oh, be no. on the other screen. Oh, it's on the other screen. Hold on. Oh, so it. here's a big question for you, Joe. Oh, yeah. Chad kind of mentioned it. How the fuck did the head get to the goddamn electric station at the end? I don't know. I was wondering that too. Did it fucking Limp roll? Way has the yeah, Limp Biscuit has the answer. Rolling, 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 rolling. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. You know, you'll be loving this shit right here. Um, <laughs> no, I'm not loving this shit. <laughs> yeah, right. No, not at all. This is fucking a terrible movie. Oh, uh, Chad, over the weekend, our mutual friend Seth Snyder walked into this place of business. And he was sitting down and the, he looked over and he saw the sign on the wall and it, it was in a shadow box and it said, live, laugh, limb biscuit. <laughs> oh, that's great. We're talking oh, West Portland, wow. biscuit, right? Good one. Yes. <laughs> oh, fuck. oh, shit. So, yeah, that's all I got for questions, man. I was just trying to figure out how the fuck that had got there, whether some random nice zombie just was like, hey, here we go. Somebody was watching a uh, high tension again. Yeah, and right. Leftovers from high tension. <laughs> little little uh, bee jibber from the fucking de- yep. decomposing <laughs> head. Mm, yummies. Uh, oh, this isn't really, I guess it's kind of a question, but uh, did everybody notice uh, Detective Skinner there? Or Director Skinner, I should say? Yes, oh, yes. from X-Files. Uh, yes, yes, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, dude. As soon as, like, that's Mitch Pelagi. Yeah. As soon as he started talking, I recognized him. Dude, I love that he had the big old fucking cigar, and I was like, perfect. Oh, yeah. Dude, I was waiting the entire movie for the smoking man to come out. Never did. No, nope. never right. did. Never did. <laughs> That's all I got for questions, gentlemen. Unless you got any, other than uh, what we got coming, no. I already, I already voiced my question, kid. What's that? I said my question was what, what happened to the other kid. Yeah, oh. yeah. We we never now did. we can't answer because we don't know because they don't tell us. He, <sighs> he had to become a zombie. You know what I mean? Like, how did he not? He was directly in the shit. But. Why did they have to go like weird pet cemetery to like just kid 
chasing down other kid at the end. I don't know. That was a little weird. It's just like, all right, like he like he was a zombie with a purpose. You know what I mean? Like they all were just like that brains. He's just like, no, I'm going to yeah. kill that little shit back. It's like, wait a minute. You're dead. He's like, yeah, I don't give a shit. Fuck killing that asshole. Exactly. Yeah. Like, okay. But douche of the movie, motherfucker. Ah, uh, ooh, the one we just talked about, Billy, the zombie boy. Yeah, yeah, he fuck did. him. Yeah, he was a. Actually, it, it wouldn't have started without him. So yes. Yo, dude, he was Scott Farkas for sure. Like, he had the red hair, the fucking braces going on. Chad, I just got, I got that reference. <laughs> yes. All right. Thank you. I was like, somebody, please get the Scott Farkas record. All right. How did we don't did, watch it reference. and where did we watch it, boys? John? Ooh, I watched it on uh, Amazon. Same here. Chad? I had a download, so I watched that. Uh, Bibby? I had it on demand, Xfinity. Okay. I will say the copy on Amazon Ooh. at least was very clean. Yes, it was delicious. I believe that is uh, utilizing the 2K scan via Screen Factory. Gotcha, gotcha. That makes sense. That's why it was so clean. I, th I think that's the same thing I have. Nice. Yes. So, guys, uh, Chad, that's not cranberry sauce. No, it's not. It's not. Favorite kill, ladies and, and germs. Mm. I, and I'll tell you what, there was very little. There was very little cranberry sauce in this movie. Yeah, yeah, dude, for real. Now, when we say kill for this, can we get some of those zombie kills or no? Because, I mean... We might have to, because every other human kill was just their brains getting eaten. Right. If I, if I had to choose a favorite, I put the kill. My favorite was the zombie in the basement with the kid when he gets blown in half. Steve still keeps going, then he gets burned by the gas. Yeah, yeah mine would be the shotgun blast. Ooh, the, yeah, that's just that, knocking it in half? Yeah, that's yeah, that oh, oh. The whole thing. Yeah, love it. Boys? Yeah, I'll go with that. Mm. I agree. Yeah, that was that was probably the best one hands down. And let's be honest, that's probably the most effort they put into a stunt in the entire mill movie. Correct. So. Yeah. However, I will give honorable mention because I laughed like a motherfucker when Scott Farkas got hit by the ambulance. Yeah. <laughs> he took a direct fucking header and then was just like, whoop, just like popped up anime style. He was fuck? Ah. So what else we got, gentlemen? We are on. Best scene. Ooh. Best Ooh. scene. Credits. <laughs> you motherfucker, <laughs> you stole mine. You stole mine. <laughs> uh, no. Exactly what I was going to say was when the credits started rolling. You know, dude, honestly, I liked everything up until the zombie started rising. Tar man. Tar man's reveal. I know. I, I, I'm gonna go with the electric. Really? Even though he's all cartoony. Yeah, just the fact that we actually see a fucking zombie, and like in some sort of manner that's not. Uh, I guess I just I like the zombie resurrection scene again. It's still not as good as the first one. Yeah, it's just it's that good, whole but... sequence with him cracking that bitch open, Tarman. Ah. That and then the whole fog sequence after the fact, like you know, you get some nice rolling fog shots. Couple different ways, couple different Okay, so since go their electrocution scene at the mall. Okay, so since we're going, um, since we're talking about it, <laughs> did you guys happen to notice that the zombies went from the slow moving Romero zombies to the fast moving return of the living dead zombies? Oh yeah, dude. Like halfway through that. the movie, they just changed. Yeah. Yeah, later on in the film, they they start to match more with the first film's uh, feel and look of the zombies. Uh, that is yeah. more evident as they surround the car. And you're like, oh, okay, it's one of those films. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I think the Horde aesthetic at the beginning is, is decent, but uh, then we f get full on, you know, Return of the Living Dead feel by the end. Yeah, I totally feel that and agree with you, Chad. Bam. So is that it for scene? Everybody got theirs? Yeah. That's yeah. Much. All right. So did the opening scene hook you in, gentlemen? Yeah, dude. Smoking a doobie, transporting some zombies. Yes, it did. Right? I will say, yeah, it did. It, but then it just kind of lagged. Like a good that, situation. That had the appropriate 
amount of 80s cheese right in the beginning to kind of pull you in. Yep. And yeah, then they just like fucking topped it on way too much. Actually, you know what? I'm going to get a little spicy on you, motherfucker. Ooh, spicy nachos. Okay, so in a world where we live in where this type of film is now a normal subgenre. And I and when I say this type of film, I say comedy horror film with like the zombie setting, Shaun of the Dead. Now, can we attribute this film as being the first of its kind to take a more comedy aspect with it with a horror setting? Uh, yeah. No, we're talking in, in, no in the zo- no, hold on, in the zombie subgenre. Actually, yeah. I mean, I mean, the first oh, name again. another film that took the comedy aspect this hard. The first one, again, like I said, the comedy is only situational from the 80s. Dude, that'd have to fucking think deep. I mean, yeah, that's not yeah. zombie wise. I would say maybe Killer Clowns. But that's what, uh, hold on. What year was Dead Heat? Dead Heat. Wasn't that I think 87. So OK, so that that predates this. Yeah, that's just before time. Hmm. OK, how about this? Uh, wasn't uh, Children Shouldn't Play with Dead Things also a comedy? Dude, a zombie I, I comedy? I've been a kid. Holy shit. Yeah, that was. And I think that, that was, was from the 70s. Uh, yeah, uh, late 70s, early 80s. I don't so, know. Yeah. I'm just trying to find some fucking silver lining up in this bitch. No, it's. I mean, listen, man, it was it was an attempt for sure. I think we could all give it that. It was a motherfucking cash grab. They used sure Tom does. Matthews again. They used the fucking right. They, tried, they, they literally bring, used yeah. yeah, and holy fuck, did they ham it up even more so in this movie, dude? I don't know about you guys, but I was waiting for that trio to die. Well, I yeah. was too. Holy shit, dude! That girl was annoying as fuck, as hot as she was. What? <laughs> I, was, I was waiting to see if you mentioned that. Oh wow! Well. Speaking of hot, mm. yes, best, best hottest hot girl. girl. Her, I, I want to say her. the girl from Return of the Living Dead three. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, sure. No, you can't. You can't do that. No, you can't jump ahead. How no. old's the sister? Old enough. Well, high school. Oh, yeah, she she's is. a senior. Yeah, she's, she's a senior in high school. Yeah, she's a senior. Uh, she but was... she's old enough to act. Uh, she. Yeah. She was cute, it... but the redhead that was with Tom Matthews. I'm gonna have to go with the redhead in the jean jacket. For a second, dude, I thought it was the chick from. I mean, shit, it, but. Which was not. Yeah. Redhead. Yeah. There you go. I mean, there's nobody really else to choose from besides the sister, you know? Well, actually, I take, I stand corrected. You could always say Mildred because Mildred was pretty hot. That's what I thought too. Funny. Did you say no, Bobby? You don't think she was a hot mom? Well, fine. Oh wait, Billy's mom. Yeah, dude, that's what I'm saying, dude. Mildred was. Mm. Oh, I, th- I thought you. Oh, I, I thought yeah, Mildred was the fucking minute. zombie that they cut the head off of. No, oh, yeah, Mildred. 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 <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, she was a milf. She had the frazzled hair, dude, with the glasses going on. It was good luck. I like it. Boy, score did that. The score set the mood. It was oh, good. Actually, yeah, oh, yeah, the score was pretty good. The Anthrax song was the best one. Was, which score was well, probably the- there was like three of them. Oh or no, two of them. I'm sorry, two of them. Both. Then. Aha! I put you on the that one. <laughs> but yeah, score totally set the mood, man. You had some nice fucking '80s metal, a little bit of thrash metal in there. Fucking good to go. What's the score exactly? I'm trying to find it. Well, I I know I have my best song in the bag. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, what's best song, boys? Is it it? What's that? What's the what's your best song? Mine is uh Lamont Flesh to Flesh. Mm, that was a good tune. Mm. It's got a little bit of 80s hair metal, dude. Not yeah. a lot. You know something? I do like the anthrax. I don't know. I I, I kind of like the, the version of Monster Mash they did at the end credits. That wasn't bad too. That was good. I don't remember. I'm the man by anthrax. I'm the man. This is a good one. Yeah, dude, honestly, you you could pick a you could pick a few different songs for this one. Yeah, yeah, you could. Hey, Hannah, what's up? Hi, Hannah. Uh, what's up, Hannah? How Hello. Are you? Favorite character, boys? Oh man. Mm, I'm gonna have to say uh, Doc Mandel for me, dude. I'm gonna go with the. Uh... 
Fuck, I just blanked the boyfriend. Oh. Which Tom Matthews? No, not the boyfriend. Like the the cable guy. Cable guy. Cable guy. Yeah. I'm gonna agree with TJ because uh, uh, cable that was fought like hell. TJ, TJ, you just trying to get that footy. Chad, you cut out hardcore, so we have no okay. idea what the fuck your opinion is. <laughs> <laughs> yep, he, he he just went completely blind. Sorry for all the white wow. noise, guys. Uh, so, was it scary? No. 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 By no means. God, no. Not even, like, you know what? Not to compare it once again to the first one, unfortunately, but I'm going to do it. The first one at least set like uh, left you with a sense of dread that you could just never kill them. You could never harm them. Yeah. They were essentially indestructible no matter what you did. You chopped them up. They still kept coming at you, dude. And even if you burned them, the shit went up in the sky and it rained down and caused more anyways. So yeah, it was just a horrible really fuck. Sure. Different. For this one, they are just like, oh, you can kill them electricity. Happy ending. La, 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 la. Basically, yeah. Like no, rogue, no rogue one ending on this one. Right. Like you said, super soft. You know what I mean? It gave, they were like, Everybody was like, we liked the first one, but the ending was a little bleak. What if we tweaked it a little bit? <laughs> we put a kid in there, and then we won't have it so bad. But scary? Fuck no, dude. Not scary all right. at all. Let's see if it's a little better. Chad, what's that scary, buddy? No, not at all. Close. What's scary is that it got made. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Does That's... it hold up today? Uh, no. Not no. really. No. Maybe the beginning parts did. I don't know. Certain points look, of it. It didn't look terrible. Like no. some of the panning cemetery shots and shit. But man, if you were watching this like for like a marathon, like for Halloween or something, this is definitely like deep in the night. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> where you don't give a that movie you. you put on, you don't watch because you could fall asleep to it. It's like, yeah. Oh, bro. <sighs> I definitely had to take a good nap before watching this one. Dude, all right. I watched it twice today. Yeah, I took wow. a nap halfway through the second round. You watched Good it call. twice? Yeah. Damn, dude. Well, I watched it while I was working out. The second time I put it on, I said, I've watched this way too much. I'm taking a nap. That, there's nothing wrong with that. Nope. <laughs> Listen. Bobby can give it two scores. The score of how he actually feels about the movie and then the luxury score of taking a nap during <laughs> oh, well, the nap, the nap was a right the, the nap. Right, the nap was five five. Five. I woke, I woke up and the credits rolled, and I said, oh, "Was it a bad watch?" <laughs> <laughs> that was a good time. <sighs> good time. Oh shit! So, were we on hold up or were we on acting? Acting. acting. We're on acting. I mean, Tom Matthews and uh, what's his name were. They were great. The acting was great all around. I think it was it definitely. Uh, here's the thing: comedy movies are harder to film. Comedy movies are harder to act due to comedic timing, and all the comedy bits on this film landed. So acting good. Yeah, I'll agree with that. They did land it, so they definitely get an A plus for the acting. Except for Billy the bully, he wasn't very good. Yeah, fuck him. He he didn't play a very convincing bully. I thought. No, he could have. Or zombie. He could have knocked. Or a zombie. Away. For the next question, uh, I will take over as always and say uh, I've said actually this answer before. It's one of those films where there's nothing to write home about. It does a job that's just good enough to make the film watchable and seem professionally shot. So watchable. I will say it was meh. Okay. I agree with that. Yeah. There's nothing else to say. There was no money shots of, oh, no, there wasn't any of that. I, I didn't care for it, particularly at the beginning, where everything kind of had a haze to it. Did you guys notice that? Yeah. Yeah, it was like, mm, that, that that's an good. 80s thing. Yeah. Yeah, and I didn't care for uh, it at yeah, all. This one looked like it had it worse. I don't know. Yeah. It just it felt like a TV movie a little bit. I'll, I'll give you that. Kind of. Premise, boys. Absolutely. It's the first film. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's pretty it's much, pretty yeah. Pretty much. First so film without the Rogue One ending. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like I said, just less. They were like, the first one was just a little too depressing at the end. We just got to lighten it up. We're good to go. 
Okay, Make it happy. And just oh, dial okay. it back. Yeah, yeah. We're not in an eleven right now. Can we just go back to like a, a nice solid three? Just right. Nice three. <laughs> we, we need the ten year old to survive at the end, not get nuked. Yeah. All right. Which is very unfair. Okay, guys. So let's get a little spicy up in here. Oh, recycle, rewind, or remake. I want to say rewind. I don't. Know. I disagree. Recycle. <laughs> recycle. I don't need to see this ever again. Recycle. I think it holds its place. Uh, I'm I'm ranking my this film and my opinions on this film are not just based on it being a horror film. Mm, so we're reviewing a comedy horror film. A terrible. I'm still gonna I'm still gonna say recycle. This is the first time I've watched it in like probably close to 30 years, and it yeah. my opinion on it hasn't changed. There's a reason why I skipped this. I watched the first and third one. There's a reason why I skipped this. So recycle. You know, I'm gonna probably even though I kind even though I disliked it, I'm gonna have to say still rewind because I feel like it's just part of the series in general, and it what it's what makes it like almost the Twilight Zone us series. Oh, um, okay, yeah. I could definitely, like I said, I wish the acting with like Tom Matthews and everything. I wish they like toned it back a little bit. Like, yeah, they overacted a little bit in the first one, but I just feel it wasn't so hammed in. Yeah, I, mean, I, I say it, recycle. But, you know, so, all right, fine. Will I watch it again? Sure. You know, just since, like you said, Johnny, it is part of the series, but I, it's the lowest of them all. I mean, if you're going to give me a choice of watching the first one twice or the first and the second one, I'd probably say the first one twice, but. Yeah. <laughs> you guys ready to give his bitch a score? I think so. Yes. Yeah. Big Chad? <laughs> I'll give it a two, buddy. That is a solid two for me. Bibby? 1.8. Wow. Jennifer? I'm going to go with a 2.3, buddy. I'm going to give it a 3.25. Too generous. Yeah. <laughs> Gormar score of 2.3. No, I think it hit the nail right on the head. Yeah. Actually, yeah. All right. That's Yeah, that's doable. Okay. So, and just to uh, throw this out there, but our score of the original one was 4.4. 4. Mm -hmm. So Again, almost double. Being relative yep. and comparing this and where this ranks with other films, I think it falls right in line. I do. Especially yeah. for like how we've discussed our rankings before. It's yeah. more off an enjoyment scale. Uh, like Chad mentioned, clearly we were all kind of on board on this one. This one was if this film was meant to be taken as a serious horror film, I think my score would be lower. If they took all the comedy out and just made it serious, do you still would you still make that statement? It'd be a completely different film. It would be. Yes, it would. Hmm. I mean, I'm totally down for uh, zombies in the cookie cutter sub suburbs. Regardless, not cookie cutter suburbs, suburbs to be suburbs to be true. Hmm. And actually it, being the fact that it was suburbs to be actually incorporated it into the story and actually made it difficult for them to operate and traverse their way through it because they didn't know it so well because everything was so new. The pizza guy actually mentioned at the beginning of why he was late, not pizza guy, but cable guy. Ah, yes. <laughs> he got lost. <laughs> Dip shit. Other bitch, man. He just got thrown in a fucking got his vehicle stolen. Then it goes crazy. I mentioned this movie that I watched yesterday, no, two days ago to to Mick, and it completely died on him. But I'm gonna mention it to you. Danny McBride goes crazy and kills everybody in a housing development. So and it's a movie. Well, housing development. Okay. Uh um I thought we didn't. I thought we agreed. No, Danny okay. Kirk. So there's this movie called Arizona, and okay. it was filmed a couple years ago, and it was released. And it's about these th these couple families that live in this housing development in Arizona. And it's after the the uh, you know the housing market crashed, so they bought these houses thinking and was and were being told that they were double in value, but the housing market crashed, leaving them with this fucking ha beautiful house that's worth nothing now. Okay, so they're stuck there. So Danny McBride goes to the realtor office and this lady goes to be uh, goes to answer his cell phone in the next room. So as she's answering this phone call, Danny McBride comes in, starts arguing with her boss. They get into an argument and he accidentally pushes him off the balcony, killing him. 
Danny realizing that she watched the whole thing then has to kidnap her and do something with her so she doesn't tell on him, which then spirals out of control, leading to Danny killing several people throughout the course of this movie in crazy fucking ways. And then in mid, mid while all this is going on, he's breaking it up with Danny McBride situational humor. Like, why is there blood all over you? Dude, like, it was crazy. Like, this guy, like, got all drunk and, like, wrecked a car. And, like, I saved his life. That's where the blood's from. Yeah, it's, everything's cool, though, now. Like, yeah. When did this come out? 2017, I want to say. Huh. What's it on, dude? I'm going to have to check this shit out. Amazon Prime. Uh, you can watch it in 4K right now for free. And it's called Arizona. Yep. I'm going to have to look that up. Then. It's a thriller film with uh, comedy sprinkled in. You. So is this going to change my opinion on Danny McBride and horror? No. Uh, <laughs> no. Because it's not a serious <laughs> horror film. It's a black okay. comedy well, film. That's fine. Which, Yeah. you know what? And I know we've gone on this road a million fucking times, dude. I, and I'm sorry. But that was my problem with 18, dude, was it was too funny. Yeah, I well, laughed there was too much, dude. A lot of Way too yeah. much. And I think that's what ruined it for me. Yeah. But I, I say this now all the time. Listen, I do like, I should say now, I like H18. But do I know it has its plot holes? Do I know it has its shit? Yeah. But I'll take it for what it's worth. And it's, eh. but I'll still watch it. Bust the bus, dude. Um, That's all I got to say on that. I'm done. <laughs> Should I share the uh, pickups I got today? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Let's see. Yo, Bobby. So you got any shoots coming up, by the way, while we're waiting for TJ? Actually, yeah. I, um, well, put it this way I've been wanting to shoot my friend Lisa, her and her husband, they live out in PA. She's been wanting to shoot my new Michael. We just haven't had a chance. It's been fucking hot, and then other shit comes up. So, but that's gonna be one, and that's that's it at the moment. Once I get the new Jason ready, then I'll start doing more. Nice. Probably come the cooler months, because as much as I don't mind wearing shit in the heat, it's been fucking hot. So Bro, to even be in a suit I, for two I, hours, I'm like, ah, mm, Bobby's I, peck sweat. I, <laughs> Sweet. Speak, speaking of sets, John, I really liked your new set with the uh, the new 13 Gallows Lane model. Thank yeah. you, dude. Yeah, huge I like that. Shout out to uh, Kate. She was awesome as fuck. Uh, yes. Um, shoot. Hey, John. Hey. Yes, bud. You know what made that shot? What's that, buddy? The versus Jason. Thank you. Yes. That. Um, you are such an imposing figure in those that it makes it scary. So, I'm is, is she is she like is she like a really tiny girl too? Yeah, she's probably about like five three, five four. That's what okay, makes that, it so that, much that really better. Helped. That really right. helped. Yeah. So that was my first water shot, or like water shoot, by the way. So I got to pop my cherry on that. That was nice. Uh, shout out to Thirteen Gallows Lane, by the way. If you want to go check out their shit, that's what we're talking about right now. I just did a sweet versus shot with uh, our shoot with Joe and Emily, and uh, this public dude. The gorge was public, by the way, so that made it even better. So there's just families walking up and down as we're. <laughs> Where you can't I, tell the story here. You need to tell them I know, to sorry, listen yeah. to Wake and Bake. Going back and Wake and Bake, I cover that whole thing. But <laughs> going back to what you were saying about the imposing dude, like that's what I said to Joe when he first sent me the thing. I'm like, I love that fucking shot, dude. dude it looks fucking colors. Sweet. Like it's one of those ones, and I'm sure Bobby probably has done it. And TJ, you got your cosplay. When you get that good shot, and you know it's you. But you're still looking at it. You're like, dude, I can't believe that's fucking me, dude. You mm -hmm. know what I, I mean? Like, I, I have a few, and I know you do too, Johnny. Like, there's a right? few where you look at it and you go, "Holy shit, that is some good fucking shit right there." Like that is. Dude. And yeah, it was. Uh, it was fun. Shout out to Kate, by the way, dude. She had this awesome little cool thing. She has. Uh, so she has two hearing aids. So she had to take them out, obviously, for the water shoot. But. I don't fucking know anything about them nowadays, but obviously we're in 2020, dude. So she says they're like, they're super Bluetooth. So she obviously she can hook her phone and shit like that, bro. That's what she games with. That's her gaming headset is just her fucking. <laughs> yeah, built in mic. That, and I'm like, that's, that's pretty fucking. Hey, look who it is. Hey. <laughs> hey, it's Bobby. All right, everybody that's... watching that figure you just saw. That's me on the side. Go buy it. Go get it at yes, Walmart. Go buy it. Walmart, Walmart. Target. Online. Speaking of buying things, here's some recent yes. pickups. Yes. Let's see these real quick. Chad. As I'm Yo. It looks pretty, buddy. 
Nice. Yes, that's Halloween nice. in 4K. Steel and then I, I just cashed these in, uh, put them on my Voodoo, the 4K Evil Dead 1 and 2. They nice. Look nice. Cool. Oh, drop my 4K. Oh, no. Okay. And then Severn Films and their infinite wisdom finally sent me the shit. Death warmed up. Ozploitation. Three oh, years right. before Peter Jackson. Death warmed up. Okay. Ted yeah. Raimi plays a kinner, killer named Skinner. And this is one of the grossest films ever made. Hmm. Skinner, huh? Right. Next of Kin, it is a Jallo film made in Aussie. I think it's an Aussie film that's like a Jallo type oh, film. Uh, Brody can tell you about that. Oh, oh thank you, sir. Aussie. And then from the director of Troll 2 and Zombie 4 comes Night Killer. Huh. Night Killer. It is the most fucked up film with more turns than an M. Night Shyamalan Ding Dong film. <laughs> I, I gotta say, I gotta say, I like the cover for that one. That was a good looking cover. The killer uh, has razor claws. I wonder where they got it from. Razor claws, huh? <laughs> mm. He That's kills new. two people by like putting their hand through them. It's cool. Both hands? Or just one? One hand, just one. Just one hand. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Nice. So what else we got in the uh, world of horror topics, gentlemen? Anything good? Anything juicy? Uh, uh, bloody disgusting. We didn't have too many things to read today, to be honest. Ah, but, hold on! Uh, hold on! Hold on! Clive wow. Barker is getting a Hulu series called Book of the Dead. This, oh, no shit. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, and Shutter was in Australia, if you guys didn't catch that earlier. Yes. Also, Joe Bob Briggs, that Joe Bob is hosting one of those things with a bunch of those things with the celebrities. So go and check that out. Search up Joe Bob on the Facebooks. Check it out with the Joe Bob the Last Drive-In. Available on Shutter. We will do. We will do. Boys, well, that's it for this episode of Le Gore in More Podcast. Your favorite horror movie podcast better than all the rest. If you listen to anything else, Good don't movie. even know what to say to you. Get the fuck out of here. Well, we love you guys. Thank you for the support. <laughs> this is your host with the motherfucking most, TJ Bowser. See you next week. Oh, this is your dark Lord of knowledge, Chad Christmas, saying see you next time, bitches. This is Big Johnny D saying keep it wet, Gorehounds. This is your killing machine, Bobby Moon, saying I'll kill you later. <laughs>